This is a session on powering up your configurable apps using JavaScript API 4X functionality. So what we're going to talk about is, is um, some of the configurable apps in the ArcGIS Online app gallery already use JavaScript API version 4.x. So we're going to show you some of the things that are available in 4.x that we're already using in the apps. We have this slide set available. Uh, I'm a little worried I have the wrong version of this app. Hold on a second. I had a link on the page and it's not there, so I'm thinking I'm showing you guys an uh, older version. Let me get a quick one. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. I thought maybe I deleted it and then we were in trouble. Okay, so the slides that we're going to show have links to the apps that we're going to show. They're available at that URL. I can bring it back up later if, um, if you don't get a chance to see it. My name is Kelly Hutchins. I'm a product engineer on the JavaScript team, and I work mostly with configurable apps. And I'm joined by my colleague, Beck, who is a product engineer on the ArcGIS Online team. So we created this app gallery that the link is in here. I'm going to see if I can get this larger. Here's our app gallery. This has a gallery that uses one of the 4X configurable apps. This one is Minimal Gallery. It's a, oh, so this is the problem with PowerPoint um, on a Mac. Hmm. Is that you, I'm looking at a browser on my screen. You guys can't see it. So, do you think if I hit the screen? Yeah, you just have to, there you go. All right, and then, all right, so this is one of the 4X configurable apps. This one is Minimal Gallery. It's a great place to showcase a set of content. Um, web mapping applications are what we're showing here, but you can also include web maps and other, other content that you have available in your organization. So I just want to point this out, number one, because it's a configurable app, and number two, because it's a gallery of some of the Forex functionality that we'll be showing you. I'm scared of PowerPoint now, but I'm going to go back in. <laughs> and the next thing I wanted to show you is that these are all the apps that we have available in the Configurable App Gallery. They're all open source. They're all available on GitHub. We have the links to all of them here. There's one called Compare that Beth will show you that compares two maps. They can be two 3D maps, two 2D maps, one 2D map, one 3D map. Um, some group apps, category galleries, some 3D viewers, um, some general 2D maps that you can use to showcase content. Um, and a new one that's coming soon, Interactive Legend, that we'll see later. All of these links in the PowerPoint are clickable. They'll take you to the GitHub repository, which has all the source code available for those applications that you can download, look at, play with, create your own app from. You can submit issues. You can submit pull requests if you think you can make the app better. Um, we're happy to uh, take a look at those pull requests. One of the nice things about the 4X apps is JavaScript 4X API has a lot of responsive capabilities built into it. So one of the things that you get um, out of the box easily is that the pop-up will dock on smaller screen sizes. So you're viewing your app at desktop, you click on the pop-up, it's floating, or you might have manually docked it to a corner, but it displays well. Once you get down to a smaller screen size, it's going to automatically dock at the bottom of the pop-up, so it's easy for people to view your map and also read the pop-up content. So this will be available in all of the apps that use that version of the API from, you know, for, the for, for all the apps that use that version of the 4X API. Let me end the show. And so this is that app in the browser. So as I mentioned, we get this nice pop-up in desktop, and once we move down to a smaller screen size, it automatically docks at the bottom of the page. 3x, you would have had to write code to do this. You couldn't get it in the configurable app, so that's a nice feature. We also have another feature in this app that uses 4x capability. This is the expand widget. So on smaller screen sizes, we take that div that has information about our app, 
and we throw it behind an expand widget, it's a good way to free up screen real estate and smaller screen sizes. So this is Forex capability that we're taking advantage of in our app. This is clunky, I apologize for the going back and forth. I don't know why it's difficult. Um, here's another example of an applicator or of Forex capability is that they're working hard to make sure that the widgets are accessible out of the box. And by that, it means that they are um, 508 slash WCAG compliant. So in this example, the print widget, I'm not gonna go there because it's gonna make me get out of PowerPoint. But if I navigate through that widget with the keyboard, it's keyboard accessible and it's got the proper ARIA roles so it'll pass the uh, WCAG 2.0 guidelines um, out of the box. You don't have to do any work for that. We have another uh, example app in the gallery called Layer Showcase. This is the first app we've really had where you can look at a collection of layers that are available in a group in your organization and you can click on the layer to add it to a map and view it on the map. This particular app also lets you switch between 2D map and 3D map. So you can view the map, view the layer in 2D and then click a button and that same layer is visible on a 3D globe and you can navigate around. Uh, stack labels, which is nice. People have been asking this for this forever. So let's actually, I'm gonna escape out and we're gonna look at this one. Open that hyperlink. So here's the web map. The ArcGIS Online Viewer Map Viewer uses 3.x version of the API. So you can look, this is how it looks in apps built using 3X, like the current version of Web App Builder and many of the configurable apps, and the online map viewer. It's fine, the labels are fine, but it's not a super great experience. But if you look at that same map in an app built using um, version 4X, you'll see that we can stack those labels, and that's a much nicer experience. I think they look better in some cases, so that's a nice piece of functionality that we get. While I'm here, I'll show you the layer showcase one, too. Well, I'm out of PowerPoint. So this is an app that lets you access layer content, so I'm just gonna add this layer to the map. It was successfully added. <clears throat> uh, this one doesn't have uh, the 3D capability turned on, so you can configure this app. But if you had it turned on, there'd be an extra button over here where you could click it and it would switch that same layer in the globe. Another thing that's nice in the latest version is that attachments will display, instead of just a link, do you remember, like if you look at it in the online map viewer, old apps, you just get like the image name, right? It's just a link. Well, in the newer apps, you actually get a little thumbnail along with the image. And I'll show this guy too. Open that hyperlink. <clears throat> So I'm actually looking at this one in um, a little code example, but let's look at it in full page view. So here we have a web map that has a feature layer with attachments and uh, dock this guy. And we can see that we can see a little preview of it. So it's a nicer experience. You get this nice little hover that lets you open it up. You can open it up and it'll take you to the image. So it's a, a nicer way to um, browse through attachments. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Beth. Let me, five, three. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, is it on? There's not that many people like Okay. I can, you can use this one. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the pop-ups. Kelly kind of touched on them being responsive. And there's three kind of areas 
You can dock pop-ups now, and then through one of our configurable apps called the Media Map, we have Hover pop-up available. So I'm going to go ahead and just show that. This is a Styler application, and in here, you kind of see the traditional pop-up when I click on a feature. It's going to be attached to the feature. All 4X pop-ups now contain this dock, and this will keep it docked there as I go through other pop-ups. Once I close it, it'll remember, and it will still persist in the dock position until I link it back to the feature. Through our media map, we have the new hover pop-up. And when I hover over a feature without clicking it, it'll show the pop-up information. This one I have configured to have fixed pop-ups, so it's going to be either um, you can fix it in a specific corner, or you can choose to have it hover directly above attached to the feature. But as I go through, it's just going to give me the pop-up information. And this is through the media, media map configurable app. And that uses um, JavaScript API, a widget called the Feature Widget, which takes pop-up template content and lets you display it um, in places other than the pop-up widget. So if it's something that you want to incorporate into your own applications, it's the Feature Widget in the JavaScript API. All of the 3D configurable apps we have are built on the Forex JavaScript API. Um, some of our newer ones are the compare. We have one that will compare 2D and 3D, so you can put in web maps or web scenes. We have an inset, which is going to allow you to have a scene with a 2D inset map. All right, let's take a look at those. Here's the compare. This is a simple trail around Mount St. Helens. You'll see the 2D map. You'll see the 2D map and then the 3D map. This one syncs, so as I pan around the map or rotate the scene, the maps are going to be synced together. And again, this can be used with web maps or web scenes. Another 3D application we have is scene with inset, and this has a little inset that allows that has an arrow that's going to show you the direction of the scene. So as I go through some bookmarks, you'll see the inset arrow map is updated to reflect the view from the scene. Do one more, take a tour around Paris. And it's easy to build apps that, that have this capability in 4X because the web map stores the bookmarks that you define in ArcGIS Online. And as a developer, you can access the bookmarks from the web map and use them with the bookmarks widget. The web scene stores the slides with the map, so you, with the scene, so you can grab those slides and present them in a manner like this. The other 3D app, um, the other component we have with our 3D apps is the measurement tool. So we have the traditional area and length, but we've added the slice tool. So in here, this is a proposed building, and it shows the, the shadows that could be possible. So I add in the slice, I turn on, and I'm able to slice off some of the buildings, and you'll see the shadows are moving. So this tool is exposed in the apps. This tool also allows you to exclude specific layers. So in this one, this is a, uh, an administrative building in Redlands, and I've had it exclude um, a couple of the layers. So as I go through, you'll see those are in there and I can easily remove one. So if I want to ex remove the uh, columns and the stairs, now those will be sliced off as well. As I go through, you see those are now missing as well. And to get those in, you can just select exclude and then click on the feature you want to exclude. Run over the measure. And a couple of the other widgets we have are the coordinate widget, um, a card style legend, and the option to go to full screen. So the coordinate widget is available through the Styler app. I'm just going to stay in my browser. <laughs> All 
So through the Styler configurable app, you have the option to turn on the coordinates widget. And in here on the bottom, you'll see as I pan around the map, the coordinates are being updated. Once I click on it, it's going to show me a pop-up with that specific location. And this can be uh, turned off as you move around. And then you can pin it. And that's when you can move around the map and click on a location. Another widget we have is the card style legend. So the traditional legend you're probably used to seeing, this is through the basic viewer, is more of a um, vertical legend. And it's not as responsive as Kelly was kind of talking about some of those expand options. So the card style legend uh, puts us into more of a horizontal landscape view. And it can be collapsed down and organizes it more into kind of a landscape view. The other widget with this is the full screen option. This is available through um, the Forex apps. This is medium map, so once I enter full screen, it's going to take over the screen, and it will take me back. If this is embedded in an iframe in a website, it'll do the same thing. I can expand it to full screen, and it will take me back to the original size. We have a new um, configurable app coming, it's called Interactive Legend. It'll be available at the next release. And this includes a filter option through using the legend and also a new widget called Screenshot. So let me show you that. There's two options to filter in the legend. You can choose to mute or completely remove it. So as I go through and I click on the legend, it's going to mute the other options. So here I'm just showing Hydro. If I want to add Solar, it's going to show me that. But you can see the other ones are just muted. Here's some polygons. And this is the full feature filter. So it's removing the items not selected. So as I turn this off, you'll see those are completely removed. The nice thing about this capability, this capability coming in the next release of the JavaScript API in just a few weeks, and this app will be in the next version of ArcGIS Online, is that all this filtering is happening on the client, so it's fast. You click on a feature and the, the content is filtered quickly. The new widget available with this is a screenshot, and this allows you to take a screenshot and include the legend or the pop-up. So if I click on a pop-up, It's going to allow me to set the map area. And it's going to generate a screenshot that includes both the legend and the pop-up information. I can download this image. Um, another thing coming with the next release of the JavaScript API is improved charts and graphs. So in here, you'll just see that there's been some improves in the column chart. And I have an example of a pie graph here as well. So this is and improve functionality that you'll get through all the Forex configurable apps. And Kelly mentioned um, our gallery apps. We have one that's coming out of beta called Category Gallery. And this app takes advantage of the new content categories. So content categories, I think, came out earlier this year. And it's a way to categorize your items either through your entire organization or just the group. And you can put items into a group and create a gallery and enable it to filter on those existing content categories that you've created. So in this example, we've created a group with trail, um, trail apps and maps and created categories. And now I can filter based on those within this app. Another feature that the category gallery has is you can create a custom header to go along with um, sorting through your categories. That's, that's all I had. Yeah, I, I was going to show uh, one more thing, and then we can take a, f a few questions if you guys have them. Uh, Beth showed the new interactive filter. The link on the first slide um, that has the GitHub repositories for all of the configurable apps that are 4X is there in the PowerPoint presentation that you can access. But she also said that the new um, Interactive Legend app also has that screenshot widget that has the capability of taking a screenshot of a map extent and including the legend and the pop-up. The developer of this widget, Ryan, he's on our team, he put it out here on GitHub, so it's open source as well. 
So you can go out there, you can download the code, you can take a look at it, you can add it to other apps, your apps, if you want to use it. He wanted to make that freely available. And you know, same thing with all the other widgets. We watch these repositories, we update them at each release, we keep an eye on any issues that people might submit or pull requests that you submit. If you think you have, find a bug or have an improvement, feel free to submit an issue or pull request. We're happy, happy to take a look. Are there any questions? Sure. Um, the layer showcase you talked about, is that JSA API? Uh, the question was the layer showcase, which was one of the apps we talked about um, earlier. Let me bring it up. That is built with the JavaScript API version 4.x. That particular app was written in TypeScript, but you know, it's just like a superset of JavaScript. So that's available currently? It's available currently in the API, yep. Yep, it was added at the last release or the one before, I can't remember. It, I know... Yeah. It was shown at the UC Plenary last year as a demo app, and then somebody promised that it would be converted to a configurable app, so we converted it to a configurable app sometime after user conference last year. So here, um, here is that app that you're referring to again. Yes, it's available in the template gallery in ArcGIS Online, and it's called Layer Showcase. You configure it by specifying a group of content, and it'll display content from one of your groups in online. Yeah, if you can't, I can give you my card. You can email me, but just search for Layer Showcase. It'll come up. The PowerPoint, yeah. You're for it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I think it was I already on. the Layer Showcase when you were looking. Oh. <laughs> so it's on you now. Got it. Oh, wait, four. Yeah, let me put this up in uh, presenter mode. Okay, so the slide, the PowerPoint presentation is there with all the links available. All right, well, thanks for coming. We appreciate it.